Welcome back to PSC Stack Bytes. First of all, let me remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel by pressing the red button in the lower right corner of this screen. Today, we keep on talking about the PMP Modern Search Web Path, and specifically, I'm going to explain you how you can extend the web path by implementing the iExtensibility Library interface. In fact, you can create a SharePoint Framework component library project, you can import the npm package called at pmp modern search extensibility, and you will be able to create a TypeScript class which implements the iExtensibility library interface. Through that interface, you can then define methods to provide custom layouts, custom components, you can provide custom suggestions through the suggestion providers model, you can provide handlebars customizations, and you can implement custom actions upon invocation of actions inside the adaptive cart that you can eventually use to render the output of the search results in the search results web part. Once you have done that, you simply need to build and package your SPPKG file for your SPFX component library, and you can upload it in the app catalog of your target tenant or site. Once you have done that, you can simply register the ID that you can find in the manifest of the library in the configuration of the web part that you want to extend, the PMP modern search web part that you want to extend. So, like always, let me move to the demo environment and let me show you how to do that in practice. So, this is the main entry point of the official documentation about extending uh, the PMP Modern Search web path. And here you can find detailed instructions about how to create uh, an SPFX component library for extending the PMP Modern Search uh, web path. In my scenario, I want to show you a setup where I have the search results web part configured to render a set of results through an adaptive card rendering. And I have a custom action for every single item through this open button. And I also have a couple of global actions like a global click and the open URL. Whenever you will click on the open button just beside one of the search results, there will be a new tab open in your browser rendering the actual content of the document that you selected. And here we can see the uh, document that I just opened. So I can do that. I can click on a global click and see the global event uh, fired, or I can even do other stuff like opening an external URL through a button. How can we do that? Well, from a web part configuration point of view, let me edit the page and let me show you how it is configured. So let me click on the pencil and here in the uh, section where you configure the output, I selected to use the adaptive card output. I selected to use the custom one and then I specified the JSON of uh, an adaptive card rendering so that I will render all of the data items. So the search results, uh, rendering the icon of the item, rendering the actual file name of the item, and then I also render an action set in which I have an action dot submit type of action, which is called from a title point of view open, as you can see here, and it will provide the following data to the uh, action invocation, which will be triggered by clicking on the button. So I'm providing the list ID and the list item ID of the item that is currently rendered in the list of items in the adaptive card. And then I also have another section of actions right here, when I have an action.submit, uh, which will be the global click, oops, sorry, and another one, which will be an action.open URL, which will open this URL. Once I've done that, if I click on next a couple of times in the final tab of the configuration of my web part, I also configured in the extensibility libraries to load that I have a demo extensibility library with the specific ID, which I will explain you how you can create and get. Once I've done that, my web part is rendering and is relying on an external extensibility library to implement the custom logic. The library that I'm referring to through the ID is actually set up in and installed in the app catalog of my set collection, or it could be the app catalog of the whole tenant. And in the app catalog, I uploaded this package. This is a package that I created using the Human Generator for SharePoint Framework and selecting to create a component library with SPFX. The component library that I created 
in, in implement the I extensibility library that you can find in the uh, PMP modern search extensibility package that I imported through npm in my solution as well as I decided to import three packages from SharePoint framework because inside the implementation of my extensibility library I want to be able to access uh, the SharePoint REST APIs in a secure way. As such, I configure my extension library to use the uh, service factory model and in fact I declared a service key for my uh, extensibility library. Then I specified few uh, local private members which I will initialize in the constructor of my service library and by providing this specific flavor of constructor which will accept a service scope instance when the service scope is finished and so ready to be used I can ask to consume the SPHTP client service as well as the page contact service through the page contact service I will be able to get the absolute URL of the website in which I am and as such I will have all of the objects configured for my uh, accessibility library so that by defining the invoke card action method for example which is the one I'm using to provide the custom behavior to my adaptive card I will get an action which will be the action selected by the user by clicking in the UI and then I can look at the action.type if it is an action.open URL I can simply open in a new window the action.url value in a blank tab and it means that in the content of my web part I'm going to render let me go back to the JSON oops sorry right here I'm going to provide this URL as the input argument to my extension. If the action type will be action.submit, it might be that I will get the open action, so the user will click on the open button, or it could be the global click. In case of global click, I will make an alert. In case of any other action, I will simply say, sorry, action not supported. But when it is an open, I can rely on the SPHTP client object that I created through the service factory model right here in my constructor. And I can say, OK, make a GET request for the current web URL, yet another information that I retrieved in the constructor through the service scope. And then I can target the REST API to get the specific list in which the item is located and I can get that specific item by ID so that I can then get back the item and using the server redirect embed URI I can open in a blank new tab that window in order to render the output and the content of the preview of my document. So simple as that. You can easily create an extensibility library, you can interact with SharePoint Framework and with the SharePoint Online environment, and you can provide your own custom logic which is pluggable into the uh, web part. The last thing you need to notice is that in the manifest JSON file of the component library you have this ID. This is specifically the ID that you have to register in the web part to make it possible for the PMP Modern Search web part to dynamically load the component library and use it. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.